Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have the following geometry theorem that we want to prove. So this is known as Descartes' uh, theorem, discovered by mathematician um, René Descartes from um, 16, 1643. And the theorem states that for every four kissing or mutually tangent circles, the radii of the circle satisfy a certain quadratic equation. By solving the equation, one can actually construct a fourth circle um, tangent from the three given that are, of course, uh, mutually tangent. So here we actually have a special case. As you notice, we see only three circles, but hence, what about this line right over here? Well, right over here, as you see in the text, one circle has a radii that's actually equal to infinity, hence this line. And this is, this is actually a special case of Descartes' theorem. With the following equation, 1 over square root of x plus 1 over square root of y equals 1 over square root of z, with these following uh, radii listed below that actually satisfies the following whatever your uh, parameter inputs for the following variables are. And hence, this is um, what today's video is all about, is actually just proving the following equation with the given, you know, image of the, of the three mutually tangent circles of, well, including with the line of radius, uh, radii equal to infinity. So basically, um, this, since this, this is a geometry problem, and the way we're going to prove this is we actually have to dive deep into um, constructing, adding our own like line segments, and performing a little bit of calculation. Especially, you're going to see everybody's favorite theorem that you would um, first learn in um, algebra, Py Pythag um, Py Pythagorean theorem. So that would be important. And um, it's just a whole lot of manipulation from there, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you um, once it comes down to the final conclusion. So anyway, let's just start. So let's actually um, do a little bit of construction over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, draw some. I'll call I'll the way I'll um, list it is like um, dotted lines, but um, that's basically just the gist of how the construction works. So I'm just going to add two line segments, um, starting with our radius z, but um, connect the lines to so that's tangent to this um, line of the radius. So let's see. So that's one. I know it's um, obviously it's not um, meant to be perfect, so I apologize for that. But y you understand where I'm going with the picture over here. Okay, so that's one line segment, and then we're going to connect this um, the rate the center of our radius um, that has uh, y and then uh, draw a line segment connecting to all the way to the end of where the um, line segment of X of the radius is. All right, cool. And how about this? I'll actually label these um, vertices that's um, in the connection of these um, line segments and the radius, um, of course. So here, I'll just call this um, A, call this B, we'll call this over here uh, C, and then over here, we'll call this D, like so, okay? So um, let's actually continue a little further and actually draw more line segments. So that way we actually form a little triangle. So let's see, I'll connect um, the center of this circle all the way to the connection of this circle over here. All right, that's one. And then we're gonna connect this over here, right? And then one more, one more circle, or one more line segment connecting from this ray to the center of um, the circle X. X with X radius, and then the um, center of the circle with uh, radius Y. Okay, so we have that. So I'm actually going to fill in the um, fill in our triangles with the different color. So give me one second to do this. So here's our little construction of our circle. So now let's actually denote some of the um, the lengths of these um, of the line segments over here. All right, so first off, we see that um, the line segment connected from here to here. Notice that this is actually just the sum of the radius from um, X and then Y. So um, I got a better idea. So here, I'm actually gonna draw uh, some triangles here. So here we have our first triangle. This is just a basic triangle, but the length is the length of these, um, the sides is what matter. So the first part, it, the purple triangle shaded, so I drew, you know, a, a triangle in purple color. So we know that we noticed that the hypotenuse over here would have to be the sum of the, um, the segments of the, of the radius. So this will be X plus Y. Then over here from the sum, so it's connected to X and then subtract from the length from here to here. So it's X minus Y. Um, so that leaves us with an unknown base. So now let's calculate the second triangle. Well, not calculate the tri second triangle yet, but like let's actually denote its lengths. 
So here I have next the orange triangle. And we know that the hypotenuse from here is that this is connected from the radius of X or so from here and then add that with the length of Y of Z. So that's the orange, the orange triangle hypotenuse is actually hypotenuse length is X plus Z. And then from over here, going back to that same triangle, we notice that the length or the height rather is connected from X, then subtract with the length of C. So this will be X minus Z with an unknown base. And then the last part is the one in pink. So triangle in pink. I know it's backwards with reflection, but again, what matters is the length of our sides. So we see that the length of the hypotenuse is um, connected with um, length of y, the radius from this circle, and add that with the length of the radius from z. So its hypotenuse would be uh, y plus z. And then we see from here with um, the height of the pink triangle is from y, then subtract with the length of z. So the height would be y minus z with an unknown base. Okay, so we have those. So now let's actually um, find these unknown bases, which of course, this is actually, we, uh, as mentioned, we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's start off one by one and solve these unknown bases. So we know, obviously we all know that the Pythagorean theorem states that for, um, the, um, when you're solving for the hypotenuse, it's A squared plus B squared, which is your base length. Then C squared is, C is your hypotenuse length. Since we already know both one of the sides or it's one of the base and the hypotenuse, so we have to solve for one of the bases. Again, I'll just call this A for the corresponding three triangles we're about to solve. So I would mean a square, then add this with um, x minus y square, then I set that equal to um, x plus y square. Okay, so we solve this, this is a square, and I'm actually gonna expand this out, but also subtract it to the other side since we're actually solving this for a. So let's see, if I expand this out, so we have x square plus uh, 2xy, then plus y square. Then this will be, um, this is positive, I subtract, so this will be a minus x squared, then uh, minus minus, so this is positive, 2xy, and then subtract y squared. Then we see that um, a, a squared is equal to, so x squared and x squared cancel, y squared, y squared cancel, so it's just 4xy. Therefore, the length of the base is just um, a is equal to uh, two times the square root of xy. All right, so that's one triangle down. Let's move on to the orange one. It's the same process again. Do the same thing. I said um, a square then equals um, x minus z square equals, actually that's supposed to be a plus right here. So plus then um, x plus z square. Now if we solve this out then a square is equal to x square plus 2xz plus z square, then subtract, so x squared, that's just subtracting this quantity, expanded quantity to the other side. Then this is plus 2xz, then um, subtract z square. a is equal to, well, a squared is equal to 4xz, then we see that um, this, this base over here is a is equal to uh, two times the square root of um, x times z. And then one more triangle to go. It's, um, we have a square, then plus y minus z square, then we set that equal to uh, y plus z square. Okay, expand this out, then um, a square, then it's equal to y square plus 2yz plus z square. Uh, subtract y square plus 2yz, uh, and then subtract z square then a squared is equal to 4yz, then solve for a, a is equal to 2 times the square root of y times c. All right, so we have our bases. Let me just underline these. I'll box them, how about that? So we have the base for the purple triangle, we have our base, one of the bases for the orange, and then we found our base for the pink. So let's actually do a little observation. Notice that um, line segments A to B and C to D, um, they're equal since we actually constructed what is a rectangle. So those line segments are equal to each other. All right, so let's actually just wrote that, write that um, observation. So note, all right, line segment 
AB is equal to the line segment CD. So what does line, so what does line um, AB equal to? Well, we just solved the base for the purple triangle over here and we say that that base is just equal to two times the square root of um, X times Y. So, and now the other part is, uh, if we said CD is the line segment, so we, it's actually summations of our bases. See the purple triangle over here, it's base connected from Z to the center of our um, circle with radius C. We said that that was equal to two times square root of X, Y. And then we add this with the base that we just saw for the pink triangle, which is plus two times the square root of Y times Z. So if I set these equalities to each other, then we see that two times the square root of X, Y, is then equal to um, two times x, two times the square root of x times z, and add this with two times the square root of y times z. Okay, so now algebra, algebra time, we'll just divide two to both sides, then this is just the square root of x, y equals square root of x, z, then plus square root of y, z. What we want to do is we want to prove that uh, one of the um, reciprocal of the, um, the square root of the variables is equal to um, one over the square root of z. So let's actually do that and divide the square root of z with both sides using the property that of our square roots that with the product, it's actually just the square root of x times the square root of uh, z, for, exa for example, in this, um, in this case. So when we do this, square root of x, y, then divided by square root of z, then that's just equal to, um, well, how about this? If that's the case, if I'm dividing square root of z, how about I divide the square root of x, y, and then separate it out so it's a product so, uh, such that it's the square root of x times the square root of y. So in other words, just doing this algebra, so it's just be one divided by the square root of z, then that's just equal to, so just be the square root of x, and then divided by the square root of x times square root of y, then add this with the square root of y, then divided by the square root of x times the square root of y. If we simplify things out, you'll see that that cancels, that cancels, and then that cancels, that cancels, and then we're actually just about done. So therefore, we've shown that one divided by the square root of z, it's just equality, it's just whatever, um, flip match, whatever you wanna go with, is actually just equal to one, and it's addition, so it's commutative, so I can just write uh, square, root of, square root of x first, and then add this with one divided by the square root of y, like so. And there we have it, we proved a little geometry problem. Uh, well, the geometry theorem in a special case, such that our circle has radii infinity. So again, um, hold on one sec. So yeah, depending on um, depending on like if you solve the equation, then um, you can actually construct the fourth circle such that it's actually mutually um, tangent to the other circles. Which this is a this is actually a very neat um, theorem, especially with this case that we we have a line that's because the radii is equal to infinity, and so that's where we actually leads to the construction, solving for our unknowns of the bases, and then coming together such that we actually get the following special equality with this special case, like so. So yeah. That's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.